And there are also functional morphemes. Functional means a closed class of words. Why do we call them closed class of words? Because generally you cannot add, you don't add a function morpheme to the language. There are fixed function, functional morphemes. Can I look less a bit uh, morpheme now? Bu alanda, yani dil bilgisi alanda. Sabit morpheme. Bunlar mesela ne olabilir? Bağlaçlar olabilir. Değil mi? Bağlaçlar. Yani veya çoğul ekleri. Zamirler. Zamirler. Bunlara bir de biz ne diyoruz? Closed. Niye? Çünkü ekleyemiyoruz. Because you cannot add new function and move into the language. Like conjunction and bark word. Preposition. Edatlar. Üstünde altında. Articles. The. And pronouns that. So we said three morphemes are divided in two categories. Lexical, it has a meaning, it conveys a meaning. And functional, it conveys a function of now bound morphemes. Bound morphemes morphemes are also divided into two categories. Okay? Derivational and inflection. Derivational morphemes are used to make new words or words of a different grammatical category from the standard. Okay? So that means here it is bound. It is bound to the stem. Köke bağlı. Yalnız kökün ya dil bilgisi sınıfını değiştiriyor, değil mi? Ya da ondan yeni bir kelime türetiyor. Bu yüzden derivation, hani derive, türetmek, derive, türetilmiş, ondan gelen diyor. Oradan bakınız. For example, this. Is it a bound morpheme? Yes. Why it is bound? Because it cannot be used on its own. It cannot stand up. All right. It is bound, but here does it change the category of the word that it is attached to? Yes. For example, good is an adjective, but when you Combine it with S. When you add S to the end of good, and you say goodness, then it is not a noun, any, uh, not an adjective anymore. It is a noun. Did it change the grammatical category? <coughs> yes. Okay. Here, last or full. Care. This is a noun. When you say careful or careless, it is an object. Suffixes, ish for example, foolish, fool, foolish, or uh, a line, quick, quickly. Meant payment and prefixes like pro, pro, ex, mix, co, um, and you add, they can change the meaning or the grammatical. And there are some other morphemes, which are called inflectional morphemes. Why it is inflectional? Because they don't change any meaning. Right? They don't change. They are used to indicate a step of the grammatical function of a word. Dil bilgisinin işlevini gösteriyor. Bakın bu diğer dil bilgisi, dil bilgisindeki kategoriyi değiştirmeyle karıştırmayın. Okay? Burada herhangi bir anlam değişikliği olmuyor. Yani mesela isimden like the difference between that and the other one. This doesn't change any meaning and doesn't change any category. Okay? It just shows a grammatical function and that's it. 
For example, poor or senior persons or not, comparative or possessive, 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 four. Like when you say book, one book. When you say books, it is two or three books, but still it has the meaning of book, right? Old, yaşlı, older, daha yaşlı, but it still has the meaning of being old, right? Uh, for example, when you say gel, gel di, but still it has it has the meaning of coming. Kine, a gelme anlamı var. Yani herhangi bir anlam değişikliği yok. Artı gramatikal yani dil bilgisi sınıfında da bir değişiklik yok. English has only eight inflection of morphemes, suffixes, of course. Now, two of them are used with nouns, s and s. Like my, uh, my father's car, father's, father's car, and then books. One is used for making the noun plural, and, and the other one is possessive. Jim's two sisters in this example. Or with verbs that are used for inflectional morphemes, sip, ing, it, and n. She likes laughing, but uh, he has taken in everything seriously. And when you use at, you can say she liked. Okay? With adjectives er or past, the loudest and quieter. In comparatives. So, what is the difference between derivational morphine and inflectional morphine? We explained, right? Let's have a look. And inflectional morphine never changes the grammatical category or word. It doesn't change the grammatical category. For example, R in the comparative form older simply creates a different version of the adjective. Sfatın farklı bir versiyonunu oluşturuyor, değil mi? Onu sfattan sfattan çıkarıp isim yap. A derivational morphem can change the grammatical category of a word. The word teach becomes the noun, like teacher, if we add the derivational morphem er, er. But of course, when they are used, derivational morphems and inflectional morphems, when they are used, they have an order. First, we use derivational morphems and then inflectional morphemes. First, the derivational morpheme like er is attached, then the inflectional sit is added, like teach. And from teach, the word teach, you uh, a teacher is derived with adding the er, the suffix. And then you say teachers, the inflectional. So, this is the summary of morphemes. We have morphemes, either free or bound. Free can stand alone. Bound, they cannot. They, can, they have to be attached. Free, two categories. Two types of free morphemes. Lexical and functional. Lexical, it has a meaning. Functional, it has a grammatical category. A grammatical function. Bound either derivational or inflectional. If the bound, if, if the derivational morphemes are attached, it changes the category and the meaning. Inflectional, it doesn't change the, the grammatical <laughs> category of the word that it is attached to. Okay? Look up. For example,
example, this sentence, the teacher's one will shock the girl's parents. How many morphemes does it have? <coughs> the teacher's wildness shock the girl's parents. Third, functional. Is it free? Huh? This is free, right? Well, it is functional. It is not maximum. Teacher, teach is free and lexical. Third, bound and derivational. S, bound but inflection. And then you go, like, shot the girl's parents. Here, wild lexical. Ness, derivational. Shot lexical. It is inflectional. The again, functional but is free. Girl, lexical, free. And so, inflectional, bound. Parent, lexical, free. Sit, inflectional, bound. Hmm? What time is it now? Shall we have a break? Okay. But 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, you have to be here. Arkadaşlar, iki dakika bir 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 dakika